Greetings in the name of the Most High. Well, it certainly is a very strange and horrific situation we find ourselves in. I uh, can't say I uh, envy the people that think they can make it all work out just like every time before or the ones living in the fool's paradise the majority of yeah it just comes to mind one more time uh, the very revealing song of satanic corruption called The Pretender by Jackson Brown And in the end, he just says, I'm going to be a happy idiot and struggle for the legal tender. That's why I'm doing all this. That's why I sold out. It's a song about selling out, right? It's a song that uh, basically says, you know, say a prayer for me. I'm the pretender. You know, like I know what I am. And I tried to, to battle against the world. And finally, I gave in. And so now I'm a pretender like everybody else struggling for the legal tender like everybody else. I'm going to be a happy idiot. Now, here's where the oxymoron comes in in that song. It was a very, very big hit song back in the 70s. Um, a happy idiot. Uh, you can't go back and be a happy idiot once you know, once you've seen, um, and once you know what uh, the, the choice is, and once you make the choice to sell out and become the pretender, um, the great pretender, then at that moment, there is no happiness. And there is no, there is no happiness because of the fact that you can never get rid of this idea that it's all a sham. You can never get rid of this idea that it's all a game. You can never get rid of this idea. Am I still on? <laughs> I'm not even... There may be some gaps there, because the, uh, the iPad I'm using to record here, you know, has an off setting where it just turns off automatically to save the battery, and, um, and then I had to get it back by, you know, touching the screen and tell it never turn off. I have to tell it never when I do a recording like this. So they will just, you know, sit there and keep recording until I'm done. And so far, it's been pretty good. You know, I have to admit, uh, it's been a really good, you know, help to me, being the screen is big enough for me to see, bigger than the uh, iPhone and um, the two products, the iPhone and the iPad, uh, and all have been, I'll just put it this way, a great help and very elegant um, in their detail and, and craftsmanship, and I really you know, appreciate all the things that can be done. I know other people have other ideas. I was never able to get the, uh, you know, the kind of like smartphone pads, you know, uh, droid, all that. I was never able to understand all that. It would never program for me. Where, where this one just, you know, beginning with the iPhone, uh, just seemed to be like a no-brainer. I could get my mail and do everything. It was so easy that, you know, and so, like, the, the interface so elegant that uh, I opted for the iPad, and that was even more amazing. And um, I don't consider the two comparable, the uh, iPad and iPhone, to the whatever else is out there. The You know, I don't even know the brands, but all the alternative, it's sort of like the PC versus the Mac. Um, the Mac is very elegant as well, very easy to use but very smart and a lot smarter than the PC world. Um, and of course, more elegant, the fit, the finish, the, you know, the, the lightness, the ergonomics, the, uh, the interfaces, the keyboard, you know, the, um, all the kind of things that just are built into it seem to be far more intuitive, far more uh, powerful than the PC equivalent and far more durable. So, you know, yeah, you pay more, I guess, but you get what you pay for, 
you get more. You pay more, you get more. And the main thing is, what's the price of having a great experience? I'm thinking about Trish with her, her MacBook uh, Air. What price for, for having a great experience? Uh, she never looked back after she got that MacBook Air. She was amazed at all the things that you could do in uh, beyond the PC, and it made her uh, her experience online about ten times better um, than um, you know struggling with a PC that she knows eventually um, you know the PC wants attention. It wants to have a virus thing going. It's got uh, you know it, it slows down. It's got all kinds of things going on. I think the Mac will too eventually get overloaded, but like I said, what 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 what's the price of um, having a good experience and having no anxiety, and not having things pop up every day you have to go fix? I think that you know that's worth an extra you know five hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever it is, um, because it's it's you that goes on the internet, it's you that has the experience. It's you that is anxious or not anxious about what your PC or computer will do or won't do. It's you that feels um, the stress when you have to fix stuff, you know? And if you don't mind that, then I guess that's, that's fine. Um, the PC is still for people that like to, you know, mess with stuff and, and uh, the, you know, there's still a lot of things you can do in the interface and add other products and, you know, you can mix and match and do all kinds of things you cannot do that with a Mac. So there's people out there that love to mess with all that. I'm not one of them anymore. I used to be that way. Now I'm looking for, I, I don't want to know about the PC. I want to go online, let's say. I don't want the PC, I don't want to be aware that I'm actually using uh, or, or a computer or a Mac or anything. I don't want to be aware of it. And that's why I use the iPad for mainly the internet because it's like I don't even know I'm using anything. You know, uh, it's it's like not having um, not having something in my way between me and the internet. It's like I go on the internet and and the the iPad disappears. That's what I'm after. Um, at this age, I believe I have uh, earned it from uh, being a pioneer in the actually in the PC world since 1984. Is where I got my first IBM computer, and it was an IBM with um, Two floppy drives, desktop, green monitor, the legendary IBM keyboard, and that was that was an amazing experience learning that. I bought it at a PC store, and uh, in '84, not long after that, they had an actual Mac store or an Apple store. And um, at that time, the Apples were very slow because they were giving a a, a user. Uh, graphic interface of what you see is what you get and graphics which slowed down the whole process where the PC was you know mainly text so it could really fly I don't know why I'm giving a history of the PC now I, I'm not sure why that uh, uh, I feel compelled to, to talk about this with all the pressing horrible I mean in the end it doesn't even matter whether you're on the internet or not I got some things on my mind. I guess in a way I'm just sort of avoiding getting into some uh, some stuff here. And, and you know, um, I stand on the, you know, the Bible like anyone else. But, you know, I don't hide behind it. You know what I'm saying? I don't hide behind it as a way to give you credentials that, that I really know what I'm talking about. Like, this whole thing we're doing right now is some sort of, you know, intellectual exercise or some kind of scholarly thing. You got to understand, it's balls to the wall here, baby. It's like, this has got nothing to do with anything scholarly. You know, you're dealing with an interface between the holy living God uh, who created all things. And some people are chosen to be in that position to disseminate information to humanity who presumably wants it. But then all these charlatans get in there that um, say they're hearing from the Lord and this and that and make having dreams and visions and predictions and nothing comes due and 
Everyone's left bankrupt. And then they, happy idiots that they are, they get up and do it again. Someone sent me a, oh, I'm in my chair now. Reclined and I can gather my thoughts. And Lord, if you just speak through me and get me out of the way, that would be good. Amen. Jesus is word, is love. What's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture is there's nothing but hate. Nothing but hate in the Christian church. Pure hatred. Then they try to make up for it by feeding you know, the poor, but it's an empty external show. They don't really mean it. It's just something they got to do because it's part of their culture, you know. God hates that. Better that a miser would have an epiphany and hand over his little piece of bread to a starving child, even though his inclination is to clutch it, hold on, or maybe take it home and store it up. But he overcomes himself for that one moment gives that bread to a child who needs it. And in that one moment of confronting his own humanity and busting through this block, love abounds. I think God prefers that. This is a guy the church would call a reprobate, uh, selfish, and uh, would not be a good example of a Christian because a Christian is all about being an external example, you know. All about that. All about that and that, and please don't tell me, well, not everybody, yeah, no, no, no. It is across the board and it's an epidemic and you're wrong. Plain, I know a lot of people, I go to church, they're very nice people. No, no, they're putting on airs, Sunday, church, they're going to be on good behavior, they're going to have hugs, they're going to talk about the charity drive. Everything's going to, everyone's going to convince everybody that everyone's doing the right thing while Jesus comes in and mows him down. Depart from me, I never knew you. You who work in equity with glad handing and smiles and charitable works, I spit on your works. I spit on your idea of what you think your work means. Yes, feed the poor and shut your mouth. The charity drive is a way to bootstrap yourself into fame and fortune. What? The conspiracy drive is a way to bootstrap yourself into fame and fortune. Just start telling conspiracies. Tie in the UFOs and the transgenics and the earth changes and the, ah, and we can get the, the, the survival gear and we get it all good. Pretty soon we're going to be doing movies and we got books and we got all the, this group of people here and we... We meet and we promote it to business and, uh, and God loves us. <laughs> God doesn't need your airwaves, idiot. God does not need you on television. On, uh, his word is out. Funny how you justify all this stuff. Like you're doing good. Getting the information out about the the Nephilim and the invasion of the planet. About the evil of Babylon rising in the church. What are we going to do? Well, let's go raise money to make a movie and so we can warn them. I t you know what I think it is? Okay, I, I rock the word idiot back. I'm sorry. It's, I get so frustrated. What else are they but an idiot if they keep doing the same thing over and over again? Someone said that they were in touch with someone that had to, re had to reject me. 
the reason they had to reject me is because the people that were going to put this one on the radio said, you talk to me and we're not, we're, you know, you're not friends with us. It's make your choice. So he made his choice, and, and then he justified it by saying, it was godly that I rejected Zeph. Come on. I'm the litmus test, man. You do that to me, that means you're off. Because I don't have like that kind of desire to be a famous Christian. You know, it's easy because I'm not well-mannered, you know, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not Christianese spoken. And so it's easy to kind of like ridicule me as saying, oh, well, he's, he's not conformed. He's not like us. So it's, it's okay. But let me just tell you something. The Lord put on my heart to tell you. You're going to burn. You're going to burn because I'm the witness and I'm not the only one who has witnessed what you've done. You're going to burn in the name of do-goodership. You're going to burn in the name of being an uber-Christian. You're going to burn in the name of being a repentant sinner. Repentant. Well, yes, repent means to change direction. And that you did. You changed direction and started building the Tower of Babel. You changed direction in the name of Jesus. You started erecting Babylon's old statues and old idols. You change direction and only hear from man and not God, but think it's God all the time, even your own imaginings. You change direction where the approval of your circle is more important than the approval of God. Meaning, how are you any different from my own mother? who in her last days rejected the gospel and Jesus and mocked it all and was filled with all kinds of demons and spirits and, and personalities and a multiple and she was completely um, you know, adamant against the Bible, Jesus, all that and mocked it. Now there's, she had another personality that embraced the Lord but you know, I had to give her a very harsh word uh, in the last, which then led up to her death six months later. And the word was, you either repent now, woman, or you're going to burn. And I had to deliver that in person to her face. And I did. And then she died. It's just that simple. The Lord gave her six months after that. And she, she threw the word out. She balked it. It was given in front of my daughter and my wife. And it wasn't really from me. I could feel it welling up in me. I could feel it. It just came at this moment, it was a, a surreal moment because it was my daughter's birthday. It was right as she was blowing out her candle, candles on her cake. And we never got to eat that cake. Interesting, you know, because that confrontation came right there. And um, the Lord wanted to tell her, you know, you got to repent now or you're going to burn. You know, meaning that in that moment, I also knew, you know, and, and I didn't know it. But at the time, she already knew she was going to die and was diagnosed with she knew that she had lung cancer at that moment. Anyway, um, I can't say what happens to people in the twilight of their lives, whether their, their heart softens, whether in her case, because she was abused and was a, a, a hor hor <clears throat> horribly abused. And a very unhappy person and, and very insane um, since she was a little girl. And... Um, It's interesting, in the wake of her death, I've gotten all these pictures to confirm that of, of her all the way back to childhood and uh, the various people, the various players, all the, you know, I seem to be the, the witness. And uh, this was a very troubled soul right from the very beginning. 
a girl who wanted to get into the candy store, who sold out around, I don't know, 15, 16, suddenly became very beautiful, you know, became a beauty queen, rode in the Rose Bowl. For those of you who take uh, note of um, civilization and uh, their rituals. Um, <clears throat> was very smart, you know, in a lot of ways, and um, but unfit to be a mother because you know, she destroyed my brother and my father. She destroys, just like we call that. The you know some of these personalities are like our classic psychopathic. In other words, that thrives on hurting other people and enjoys it and has no guilt and no conscience. You, you know the type and interviews people and in see if they're they're vulnerable to her what she wants to do to them. And if she sees they are, then, then she hires them and then she does what she's gonna do. And I've watched this all my life, I didn't understand. <clears throat> but it's because she needed help, you know? She needed, uh, obviously, spiritual help. She needed, um, she had been obviously trauma, traumatized and abused as a child by her parents. And that was, I think, all covered up. And, um, you know, just nothing ever did get admitted. But at some point, the Lord held her accountable for her for e her evil, and gave her a word through me of you know you got to repent or you're going to burn. So that so this this theme of you got to repent or you're going to burn, and you got to repent somehow before death, and really and have that contrite heart and contrite spirit, and really kind of pour out. To, that's really a form of birth. And accept the gospel and the, and the offer of amnesty from uh, Jesus. And then he gives you a Holy Spirit baptism, which is our proof. We have to witness that in a person or we don't think they're born again. You know, if, if you, you could feel the Holy Spirit on them and you know, you know it when you feel it, you know it when you see it. You know the Holy Spirit when you can. If someone does not have the Holy Spirit but says they're a Christian, then they're not born, they're not twice born, then they, they for whatever reason, have not made it. And the church is filled with those, like 99%. So they come and they uh, use the alternative media. Well, the other thing is, you know, my, my, well, what I have to say about my mother, I love my mother, you know, but I, at the same time, I was a victim to the evil and I was hurt badly scarred for life and also have wounds, physical wounds that will never heal. You know, from uh, black magic, uh, spells and witchcraft, uh, poisonings and uh, murder attempts, and including uh, putting an assassin on me when I was a child. Um, you know, basically hiring the mob, hiring a hitman when I was 18, yeah. I confronted her with that that night as well. I mean, I said, you know, we ran into the guy and I actually met the guy, you know, later on. What are the odds on that? There are no odds. The Lord's got this. That's the point. But survived all that and I, and, you know, and lived to tell her, woman, and at this time I've detached it from the idea of being her son because she really shouldn't have children. But... <laughs> um, because yeah, most of her, if it, most people would look at her and go, she's pure evil, you know, based on if they got to know the truth. But, you know, there was a sliver or two of goodness there. I, you know, I'm not going to paint it all one way because most people are a mixed bag. But this idea of surviving the, the murder attempts and and uh, and other manipulations that, that were quite painful. You know, a, a son doesn't understand. Why would you want to murder your child? Why why did she celebrate when my brother died at the hands of a of a of a witch that became his wife, and then he died? And it was obvious. It was she she the talk call it talk about the pot calling the kettle black. She ends up suing my mother. Ends up suing my brother's. Um, you know, widow, wife, for wrongful death and won like a million dollar suit. So if there was nothing there, how did she win the million dollars? I 
I know. And after the funeral, I mean, she jumped in the, I remember, remember I was, she jumped in the limo with me, dried her uh, quote unquote tears, started laughing. And she goes, how did I do? Was I convincing, you know, that she was mourning when she was really celebrating? It's actually, there's a dark side to this. That's nothing compared to the real truth, which I'm not going to get into because it's really, there's some things we should talk about, you know, like there, there are things done in secret, the Bible says, that shouldn't be mentioned. Let's just say we can, we, you can understand by looking at horror movies what people can imagine themselves doing in the name of satanic ritual and all those kind of things. I don't want to go there. I grew up with it all around me. You know, I grew up with, I, I remember, you know, being in the, the house at 7.30 in the morning, waking up, coming downstairs and seeing nothing but um, broken glass, naked bodies, people, um, you know, everyone having sex with everyone. And, um, you know, at this case, I didn't see children involved, but I mean, that, that was, that's been a part of it as well. And, um, you know, uh, and I would not condone any of that, and I was against all of that, and uh, that's probably the motivation for why they wanted to bump me off, because I wouldn't become one of them. So in a sense, my existence was blocking them from being comfortable. You know, they want to get together, and they want to do things, and have sex, and have rituals, and you know, they want it to be a casual, everyday thing. So you have someone that disagrees around, and it just blocks it. So the answer is to kill that kid, you know, get rid of it. And that's kind of the... Um, that would be a sacrifice to boost us all. And that's how they think. And she told me, I would have never ridden in the Rose Parade had I not sold out to Satan. There would have been no uh, uh, me marrying the, the, the top guy, riding the Rose Parade, having a screen test at Hollywood, which, um, and I saw the pictures of the screen test. It was like, my first word that came to mind was, is she going to be in the new Alfred Hitchcock, um, you know, uh, is she going to be in a remake of Psycho? <laughs> because it, that's what she, I'm sorry if the shoe fits, that's what she looked like, a psycho. Like an absolute, you know, whoa, stay away. <clears throat> but um, there would have been no riding in the Rose Parade, no being prominent in L.A., no... Um, you know, elitism, no gravy, no pudding, you know, remain in poverty. Um, so she was a zealot, you know, in other words, if you don't kowtow and bow down to this, to my God, the God of the world, we'll kill you. Nobody gets a clean shot. So the definition of loser is someone that doesn't uh, conform to Satan. That's it, period. Oh, and she laughed at my brother because my brother liked the Bible and uh, was studying the Bible. And she mocked and laughed at that. She thought that was hilarious. Anyway, let's depersonalize that. I'm just looking at a demonic... I mean, who would mock and laugh at the people reading the Bible? Satan. So the spirit there was just basically almost like a cliche. Every cliche you know about Satan and the way they would act and the way that they would... what things they would say are things my mother said, almost like as if on cue reading from a script. I really never knew the woman because I didn't... I don't know who was there. But she was a good, I'm a witness to things that are very close, including even in the last days, uh, the high priestess of Santeria putting bugs in not only my mother's food, but my food. I, I think she might have helped bump my mother off. I don't know. Live bugs. Yeah, that's what happened. That's the form of poisoning. They put those in you and then they do their damage. And no one's the wiser, right? You can't get in trouble for that. 
Witches are always doing stuff like that. This one witch used to urinate in my mother's apple juice. I, I don't mean to be gross. But it was so she could bond. So my mother would see her as a daughter, see? So she would, so those fluids would, would you know, I mean, you have to be kind of in, you know, third or fourth or fifth generation witches, not, you know, know about all this stuff, right? So that, that's a witchcraft technique for bonding, putting a little urine in the uh, apple juice in hopes that she could get her to, to, you know, give her the house after she died or put her in the will somewhere. I, you know, it's always a money plot. But that's basically, um, you know, I mean, and, and I'm, uh, that, that was recently, in addition to putting live bugs in the food, which she did to everyone. And, uh, you know, some of those are designed to kill you. The idea there was to wipe out the, uh, the entire family except for her and then the, the, then the this um, caregiver, this maid, the century of high priestess could then work, you know, on uh, becoming my mother's daughter for the purpose of gaining. You know, the irony is, first thing that happened to her after death was the, the, the much coveted house that had to be sold for taxes. <laughs> and nobody got anything because it just was, you know, everything was... You know, people don't even realize in this country how uh, taxation will destroy um, any kind of generational wealth. That people really can't leave. Like I can't really leave. You know, ultimately anything to my daughter because um, you know, I mean, I can, but taxation is now going up in this next year to fifty-five percent. You think that's fair? The people they they work or they if they if they if they. No one has idle wealth. My mother was a businesswoman. She worked. She, she worked and she built whatever she had. But the government takes it all away. And the thing is, is, you know, if I'm successful in my life and I work at things, and I have some businesses and things that, you know, help me to afford to be online with you. Um, <laughs> no, no, there's nothing, nothing, um, nothing, uh, that I need to talk about and nothing very glamorous, but uh, let's just put it this way. There's no guarantee any of those things are gonna work out for me and for my family and for, for, for our little family here. There's no guarantee. I have no guarantee that anything's gonna work. In fact, there's losses. I have, I have racked up some losses and some gains and it has, it's been a little bit of a mixed bag and I'm really not getting anywhere so far. I'd like to. But I feel like that, that boot of the government is on me and the regulations are on me. I mean, you know, I've got all, all kinds of ideas for businesses, for things that could be really cool. And I love to employ people and, um, you know, and all that. And, and, and I, I believe in that. You know, I employ people, then they go and they buy stuff and the economy rolls that way. But you see, we, there's so many blocks that are being put in regulation-wise that we can't really operate. So we're looking for, you know, hedges and we're looking for, you know, an alternative and we're looking for, you know what I mean? And none of this is very fruitful. It's not like we can just kind of come up with the idea for, uh, I looked at radio stations and things, you know, and as a maybe to get the, I like to have um, uh, an ability to uh, broadcast. But then again, I, I'm not sure I could find five people that were qualified. But I've, you know, <clears throat> put my money where my mouth is in terms of the economy, and I've, I've taken risks even in a, in a climate that most people would say is impossible, and most people like that have anything, they're just sitting on it, and so people are not getting employed, and it's because of this government. But the people are too stupid to figure that out, so they won't let the boot off the face of entrepreneurs that would create jobs because... They feel that, that they want to just take their money and, uh, you know, if you want to grow the revenues of the country, if you want to grow the coffers of the United States government, you let business, unre you know, uh, alone and let them do what they do and thrive and then the coffers go up and overflow and the, the budget gets balanced. But you can't just keep punishing people, then raising taxes on them. What's going on now just seems to me to be, be human torture. 
they're not interested in, in, uh, in raising revenues. What they want to do is run the debt to where it becomes a debt crisis and then, you know, corral everyone into the internment camps and just put them away and kill them all. And it's almost like they, they have a spirit of failure, the people in the office right now in, in the White House and in the Congress. They, they would rather punish people. There was a, a, a Democratic Senator, Patty Murray, who, who said that if we don't get a deal with the Republicans on raising taxes on the very wealthy, she, they're, they're going to um, let all the taxes go up for everybody. See, it's about punishing. So she, she's willing to throw all her constituents under the bus on these Bush tax cuts. And she's completely demonic. If you want to see someone demonic, just look at her. It's a classic case of demo, demonic possession. She wants to destroy her own constituents because she uh, can't get her way. So she would, she would, and I'm like, well, honey, you've already destroyed everybody. You know what I mean? It's time for the hook to come out and pull you off the stage. But the people here don't have the will to do the right thing because they threw God under the bus. If you want to grow the revenues, you have to cut taxes, cut corporate taxes to bring money that's offshore. There's trillions offshore that would come in and let the money flow into the system and start capitalizing business enterprises so that we can all get jobs, right? And then we would pay taxes and then coffers would explode. And they say, well, that's top down. Top down doesn't work. And I'm like, that's, top down is the way it works. And let me prove it. You're never going to get a job from a poor person. You get a job from someone that has some means to pay you your fair wage. That's top down, buddy. That's top down. There is no such thing as bottom up or mid. Uh, Obama's trying this new thing of middle up. There is no middle up. There's a lot of people that just want a job, but they're not really entrepreneurs. They don't want to create jobs. The government can't create jobs because it's not, it's not a creative entity. You can't do it. I would unleash the power of the entrepreneur, the small businesses, create incentives for them to uh, do whatever they do. Same thing with healthcare. I would make the healthcare system an incentive, so the, the tax breaks if you get healthcare, everyone would be on healthcare. Everyone would find a way to get healthcare if there were tax breaks for healthcare. You know, if there were some benefits to, to getting it, to getting insurance. Simple. No, it's a punishing thing. See, it's more about the punishment. It's not really about solving the problem. It's about the need to create human suffering and punishment and punishment and create class warfare and get one group of, and punish and punish and war and hate. The people in Washington today promote nothing but hatred and warfare. Everywhere they go. Hatred and warfare. Every senator, every congressman, the president, and the people all seem to be engaged in warfare. And then the little people, the people that are the most vulnerable, you know, who are sensing a, tr a trend, they start flash mobbing Walmarts and different things, thinking that's cool. Anarchists have been given a license to throw, you know, uh, garbage cans through Starbucks windows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, against the corporate man. And everyone's pointing at the corporation and at the Jews, and at this, and at that, as being evil. They're not pointing the finger at themselves for being a part of the problem. The problem is, is that, uh, you know, if they would just refuse to buy into the mind control, then the Congress would fail in trying to energize the uh, anarchy movement. The people at the top are criminals. They should be arrested and thrown in prison for life without the possibility of parole at this point. But they're protected by the Secret Service, law enforcement, and the Pentagon, and the rest of it. And Homeland Security, don't forget, the new Gestapo force in America. Um, it's amazing watching history duplicate itself and the the pain and suffering these people are going to go through in this country, especially Democrats, because they're the ones who have the, 
they're the ones who worship government, the Democrat. And they worship government and they worship the state. So they're the ones that are going to get the most pummeled. As soon as they don't need to give you food stamps, as soon as they got a, enough of a majority, they're going to cut all benefits, including health care, food stamps, you, you name it. Same evil in Nazi Germany, same evil in Stalinist Russia, same evil that you, you know in communist China. It's the same thing. Uh, you know, it's been enough time now since uh, in my own in my my own personal my own personal history is detached. It's it's strange, but to give you a little tidbit about a little update about um, the prophetic word given, woman, you either repent or you're going to burn. And I think, you know, I'm so sorry, but I have to honor the free will of people. If they want to reject the word, they can do so. No one's ever going to know who God's prophets are. You know what I mean? They're not going to be, um, you know, perhaps the prophetic gift kind of goes from one person to another who is able to, to wield it. So it's going to come from the mouths of babes. From the people that you would think, well, they don't really know the Bible. They're not really a scholar. They think they're a prophet. You know, like I could see a little kid putting a vision out on YouTube and having the whole Christian community mock it and slam it. Oh, we've already seen that. <laughs> I'm just saying, that'd be the typical behavior, right? Mock it and slam it. I used to, you know, I, I used to really want to see the great debacle of the USA and then as a result the rest of the world. Um, it's time we talk about the Olympics. It's so disgusting of, a, of, a, of an ordeal, of an orgy. It's so disgusting, so despicable, so godless, so, um, I mean, if man is proud of this, man might as well just be proud of giving, you know, of of crapping out diarrhea then. And, and then they ought to put that on a canvas and enshrine it. It's nothing but caca. The whole thing. It's awful. It's the same feeling I got at Disney World. I wanted to puke everywhere I looked. It's just this grand facade and all these meaningless, meaningless, completely meaningless dances. And the, Oh no, I mean, it feels good. You can pop some ecstasy and drink and sit there and kind of get in that sort of rush thing of the, of the pomp and, and uh, circumstance of it. But it's just, it's, it, to me, it's the worst of the worst. And um, I guess I'll be boycotting the rest of it. I don't care who wins a gold medal. I don't care if, what the USA does. Um, the USA has its own problems to solve. And USA, let me explain something. If you don't get God back into, your, in, into the system here, you're going to burn. It, it, it's going to be the ugliest end to the shortest experiment that anyone has ever seen, and it will be vehement. Just like Rahm Emanuel kicking out Chick-fil-A out of uh, Chicago, then there's Boston, and now San Francisco. Vehement! Yet they're, built, they're letting Muslims build mosques. Muslims who are sworn to kill all homosexuals are being allowed to build mosques, but a guy who has an opinion on marriage who is peaceful he can't have a Chick-fil-A. This is a spiritual battle. Rahm Emanuel represents Satan. He is of the devil. He's pure evil. And his rabbi must be pure evil. And his whole line must be evil because he's nothing but a foul monster. I almost sound like uh, Korean propaganda. Foul monster. But, um, now he's not the one that's allowing the mosque. Um, is he? But they have tolerance for Muslims, is my point. Muslims are welcome, and he's welcome, well, what he's done, he's welcome Farrakhan. Farrakhan is welcome, in fact, uh, to help quell the streets of all the murders, which he can't handle, because it's a godless uh, city at this point. Because he's, you know, the one Christian business that wants to be there, he's kicked them out. Those are not our values, he said. So the values of the Bible are not the values of Chicago. Okay, so God, is, God has been thrown out of Chicago. And now I predict the murder rate goes through the roof. Thousands per year dead. Martial law, curfew, you name it. 
Chicago's going to get it. And it's all Rambo's fault. He was a good secular... And, you know, I know the guy goes to Israel with his kids and he, he goes and meets with his rabbi and stuff in Israel. And it's like, well, but what do you guys talk about? How to take over the world, a secular thing? I mean, you, do you even know God, rabbi of Rahm Emanuel? Do you even know who he... You're just like, all you know is book learning. You don't know anything. I can see now in the spirit, you know nothing. Yet you talk, you lead, you tell people what to do. Well, uh, a lot of the rabbis know nothing because, you know, people think, oh, rabbi, they're cool. If, if you're a Christian, sold out to Jesus, rabbis are not cool. There's only one rabbi, and that's Jesus. Nobody else, everyone else is a pretender. Please. Emmanuel's rabbi proves that the rabbi, that, that uh, rejecting Jesus leads to godlessness. Proves it! And for the record, my brother was a pure heart. Um, you know, he died at 33. But he was a pure heart, you know what I mean? He, 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 he was just uh, naturally a pure heart. And, and the last thing he would ever do would be, you know, the, 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 the whole idea of even the satanic thing even existing, he didn't really believe it, you know what I mean? He, he would never, it would never even occur to him to believe there was something that evil around him. So he was like a lamb to the slaughter. And I, you know, <clears throat> all of this, I keep going back to my history, but you know, it's, it's because it's a teachable moment and because I have detached emotionally or, or processed it all, it's now more like when I talk about my brother or my mother, or the, the, the people I knew or friends I had, to me it's all very abstract. You know, in other words, it's like, yep, that's, the cut, like, that's what they do and this is what happens. And, and nothing that, that I've experienced or witnessed or gone through is anything other than the typical satanic society thing. Nothing was really, with me, was really out of the ordinary. The, the, I think the, where I could be a benefit is that I survived intact to, to explain um, that it's, um, you know, what the Bible already says, but I mean, to say, yep, the Bible's right, it's global. It's worldwide, and it's, the, it's a gateway into uh, the Olympics. If you want to be a big-time honcho like a guy like uh, Cameron over there, um, you would have to you know, bite the apple. Sorry, you'd have to uh, bow down to the devil. You would have to, because that's the language that they speak. And it's all nod, nod, wink, wink, because no one ever, you know, they're, they're sworn to secrecy that this reality does not exist. And the secret of their success is when Obama was saying, you didn't get there on your own? Well, he's, he's not talking about um, infrastructure. He's not talking about um, a good teacher. He's talking about the underbelly. He's talking about that they work as a collective, that nobody gets anything unless they sell out. And then they bootstrap you into whatever job or whatever thing that they feel you should go to and it's other people that bootstrap you there as a reward for your selling out and serving them. And basically, nobody gets there on their own. Anyone who has tried to get there on their own can't do it. It doesn't mean it's always evil. I mean, I don't think the Chick-fil-A people are evil, you know? Uh, and they, they would be, you look at them and go, well, you have a success, even though they're embattled now. Um, you know, uh, you, you can't, you know, you, you could say, well, God will open a door for people here and there that are not going to do it the satanic way. But Obama is referring to the kind of help he had when he's talking. He's talking about that you didn't get there on your own. No, somebody paid for Punahou School. Um, someone inducted him into uh, masonry as a, as a, probably a Jacques de Molay, uh kid in, uh, when, before graduation because he's doing the Masonic handshake upon graduation. It's very clear. 
somebody trained him and gave him money to to in scholarship to go to uh, Chicago, and um, and then be able to go from uh, Occidental College to Chicago to you know furthering his training. Uh, some famous people were involved in his life as mentors, including the big new Brzezinski and uh, uh, Frank Marshall Davis, who was a, a known communist. His grandparents were communists, and they raised him. Um, you know, he's been the stealth communist the whole time, and every once in a while he, he'll tell the truth of who he really is, and then they'll try to put him back and say, no, you can't say that, you know. The whole nod, nod, wink, wink thing is the media, um, the, 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 the powers that be, if you will, are all involved in nodding and winking about getting this communist regime into the United States. And the first thing they had to do was get rid of God, and corrupt the morals, which is what the, the Olympics is all about. The whole gay thing, is not, it's got nothing to do with, gee, you're gay, we should be tolerant. It's got nothing to do with that. It has to do with corrupting the, the prior system in order to break it and bring in this secular new world order where, you know, I mean, put it this way. A gay person can say anything they want about anything with no punishment. But if someone says something that even unrelated, like in, I believe what the Bible says, that then now is anti-gay. It's either anti-gay or it's racist, right? If you say that Obama said you didn't build that because he's speaking in a tone that makes him sound like an angry black man, actually picking that phrase out, they're doing that for the commercials because they're racists. And then they're homophobes. So anything of the Bible, it doesn't take much. To, the, the hatred now is insane. It's not a big leap for... Uh, for, for HSA or whoever, whatever agency to, to round up the Christians and, and put them to death. I mean, that's almost like, like uh, default at this point. I mean, that would be as easy as it can be. And that, I think, is um, the end result of where this spirit goes. And um, at the same time, how can one then uh, want to get rid of Christianity, the Bible, and Christians and then welcome in Muslims who are misogynists. The, and the feminists are welcoming them in and they beat their wives and kill their wives and kill their children uh, for honor killings and with no repercussion. And the feminists are welcoming them. How can that be? But kill the Christian, but the Muslim who says all homosexuals, all gay people should be killed, they're allowed to come in and build a mosque and Rahm Emanuel will, will, will greet them. So when he says... Chick-fil-A's values are not our values. Uh, that's wrong. He's a hypocrite. He's bra he's, he has embraced Islam and Farrakhan who think that gays should be put to death. Um, that's un uh, how can anyone exist in a world... Th that right there beats my mom. My, you know, God rest her soul. I hope she made it. I, I don't know. I'm, I have a feeling it's not the case, but... Uh, I did what I was supposed to do, which was give her a word, and the clock ticked for six months, and that was her death. And I mentioned it here because I finally feel that I have some closure on it in the sense that uh, now God's will was done there. I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. The Lord's will was done there, and, um, and people have the right to reject or accept I think if we weren't in this culture we're in now, I think there's a possibility that more people would accept the gospel, but I, I will say this. The gospel will be rejected from here on out. When people say they, they receive Jesus, I don't say anything like, whoopee, let me see the Holy Ghost in you first, because I don't believe it otherwise. So, I gave my mother that warning. And let me give it to you, USA, the same warning. You either repent, and I know you won't, Congress, but you repent, or you're going to burn. Period. If that sets off a six-month timetable, so be it. Um... When, when I say repent, I mean go by the Constitution, the, 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 
declaration that the rights flow from our Creator and act accordingly, Judeo-Christian law, which I know you're not going to do. You want now you want Sharia. Feminists want Sharia law, so I guess feminists really want to be beaten by men. So all that feminism was just a complaint that ball, that men had no balls or whatever, and so now. They're tired of a mask, and they want a man to come in and really tell them what's what, and really smack him around. Really? That seems that would make them fools and silly and, and uh, not worthy of respect. But it's true, isn't it? A really hardcore feminist really wants to be taken in hand, and you. Know, you know, the end res whatever the end result by a real man who's going to, you know, take the bull by the horns <laughs> and show him what's what. And I, I don't mean in a violent way. I mean in, you know, in a, uh, you know, there'll be no power sharing. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's what women are starving for in this country. They're, 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 they're starving for, they've emasculated all the men since boyhood. And now that there's no real men, and look, look they're, all, they're all effeminate kind of, you know, trying to be cool and whatnot. Metrosexual now has now become just outright feminine. And so now, um, basically the women, all these feminists are like regretful and they're like, they just want to be taken in hand and, and uh, throttled <laughs> sexually. You know, they want, to be, they want to be told what's what. They want to be put in their place. It's just, um, which is kind of an over, like a, almost a perversion the other way. It's like a backlash the other way against this sort of polite culture where we have gender neutral everything. And again, all this, is 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 uh, satanic because the whole idea of a feminized man and masculinized women is Satan trying to undo what the creation of God was in the first place. The creation of God and the Bible would be a conservative position to be in. Conserve the Bible, conserve the morals, conserve God, conserve the Constitution, conserve the American way, conserve American exceptionalism, conserve. American freedom, conserve uh, the tradition of, of uh, excellence, conserve, you know, uh, contrite humility, giving thanks to God daily, you know, all those kinds of things aren't done anymore. Now people congratulate themselves. They spike the football, you know. They, they, uh, Obama can't get through the day without saying about 20 million eyes. I did this and I did that. I got Bin Laden and I saved uh, GM. Well, GM is bankrupt, dude. GM is off the cliff. Their sales are so bad, they want to start instituting subprime lending, a very dangerous practice for the United States of America, in order to give, you know, Chevy Volts to people who can't afford them, like the housing crisis. It is unbelievable. I did that. I saved them. You, know, you saved GM? Oh, yeah, man? You're not worthy of respect. You're no businessman. You did not save GM. You just prolonged the inevitable at taxpayer expense. You're great with spending other people's money, but you, you right now will not repent, but the word goes to you too. You either repent or you're going to regret it. The window is now. Oh, I know. I'm going to be soft-spoken here. I, I don't need to yell. I don't need to yell when I, you know. The same warning, I'm sorry, the same warning goes to Christians. Even more so than to a guy like Obama or to the government or to, you know, the, the, the church leaders or whatever. To the alternative Babylon uh, Christian church perverted system online filled with conspiracy theories and... Um, filled with, uh, I don't even know what, you know, the, the, who the, the, the prophet du jour, the vision, the this, the that, people run after everything. People seeking fame in the name of Jesus on the internet. 
oh, you've done a great job. You've, you, for your 15 minutes of fame, you've, you've drowned out all the other voices that were very soft and simply uh, giving people a, a word, a rima, or something. I should just really do scripture and nothing else. Uh, does it hit, I, I'm not sure this little fireside chat helps. I'm not sure it helps because, but I didn't want to do the same form as what they do, you see? We're going to have scripture, we're going to break it down, we're going to prove it, back it up, but I don't like that because it hurts me to see how they do that in order to get into your good graces, to get your minds. They do the right scripture dance, razzle, dazzle, dazzle, and you go, oh, that's a Christian. I better listen to that. That's the word of God. The word of God is not just bound in, the, in the, the book of the Bible. The word of God is God. And through every vessel that is of God is the word of God, is another Bible, and would line up with the truth of the Bible. So, I don't know what we're talking about. A form... We're talking about a form, son. We're talking about a form. We're talking about the form, a likeness, but have not the spirit thereof. Gee, that looks like a duck. They got a Bible in that hand. They're quoting and they're on YouTube and they're talking about, you know, they're showing the FEMA camps and the coffins and the, you know, and then uh, we're, we're, we're going to cut. Hey, we're going to have another Yellowstone. Uh, Mass prediction by authentic prophets of Yahweh coming forth to explain how Yellowstone's going to go off like in 2002. That was some awesome smack, man. And they were all as false as can be. Oh, they're still out there? Uh, oh. How about you guys in Florida? Did you uh, move off the coast when Steve Quayle told you to? Because God told him and he has insiders and inside the talking about it. Did you move? off the coast because billions were going to be killed down there or millions or hundreds of millions or whatever. 20 million, was that it? Okay, so 20 million people, did you, did you guys move to get out of the harm's way of the, uh, the BP oil spill? Because you know what? It was politically incorrect in the Christian community to say the BP oil spill wasn't a rip in the earth that could not be breached or could not be, you know, mended or would, would, would eventually tear up the... There are still people out there pushing it, like, oh, you don't know what's going on, but under the earth, under the earth, you know, they really, they really, uh, there's something horrible that's happened, it's gotten worse and worse, you know, and they went on and on like that with the BP oil spell, remember that? All in the name of Yahweh, and these were all people, oh yeah, all your, you know, from, you know, then you had godlike productions and people that I had, well, yes, more falling out, so I guess I've fallen out with every single one of them. I've fallen out with every single person that I've come in contact with in terms of uh, show promoters on the internet. Not everyone, but most. There's maybe three people that are, and they're, and they're you know, friends of mine because they're real people, you know, and they're earnest. But they're drowned out by the, 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 a, a huge sea of voices we're all saying, look at me, look at me, look, look, I'm prophesying. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Hey, look at me, look at me, I got it here. Let me explain about the darkness. Most people will never see the darkness I experienced, and I hope they never do. But with all due respect, they're not they haven't been through it. They haven't seen what I've seen. They're not qualified to talk about witchcraft, the darkness, multiple personalities. Unless you've suffered under it, it's just an academic exercise. You're not really qualified. You haven't seen it. You can imagine it. You hear testimony of others. But unless you've been through it yourself, sorry, you're not qualified to speak about it like, you, like you're someone that's been through it. You know about it. You've, you know, you've ministered to people who have been and you've helped to heal their multiple personalities and the trauma-based mind control victims and even military-based mind control, satanic ritual abuse, blah, blah, blah. You don't know what you're talking about because you haven't been there. You don't know. 
because there's some deep things that are not even mentionable through words that, that are part of a person's experience who's been through it. And the thing is, is that unless you've got that pain, I'm sorry, unless you feel that pain every day, that pain, unless you've had that pain, unless you have those wounds and those scars, you don't know. You don't know. But you see, they prop themselves up as experts, uh, friends. And they, they, they recruit multiples and, or people they think have been through satanic or ritual abuse or have Illuminati bloodlines or whatever it is. And it all becomes another avenue to fame and fortune, don't you see? And I'm sorry for the people that get used by these charlatans to become part of their cadre of, you know, souls that they possess to be able to have, you know, to put shows on and, and do videos to show you these poor victims. If it wasn't for me being a minister of Yahweh, Jesus, they wouldn't have any chance No minister healed me, but God himself direct, I don't need any experts in my life. Whatever traumas and scars I've had, I've come to an assimilation and a forgiveness and a detachment. I have a sound mind because the Lord is my God and the ethics and morals of the Bible are mine. And um, even if I violate them being a sinner and all that, I'm still going to hold those up. And those principles, and seeing how other people have suffered, which the Bible is filled with, and seeing how all this occultic stuff and SRA and Herod killing the, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the two-year-olds or whatever, all of this kind of evil that we've seen and all the pain and suffering in the Bible makes a person feel like, well, mine's not, so I can handle it, you know? Yeah, yeah, people have been treated, abused, thrown in jail falsely, they've been raped, they've been hurt, they've been put in bondage, they've been kept as prisoners, um, all of this. They've been falsely accused because the spirit of the enemy jumps into people on the other side and they just get filled with the spirit and they go after you, you know, to create pain and suffering for other people. The Congress of the United States seems to be there to create pain and suffering for the American people. Well, what other purpose do they have? They don't have any, they don't solve problems, so they don't have any purpose other than to create pain and suffering. And if you don't like it, then they got uh, Homeland Security to back them up. But what is Obama want to have a private police force? Every bit as powerful as the military, remember that? A citizen police force, remember that? That's identical to a Stalin, Hitler and stuff. I mean, this is America. But people just, what, look the other way? It's, let me explain why. The people of America are traumatized, and there are multiple personalities. In other words, you have to be a multiple to handle something like I'm going to kick Chick-fil-A out but let Farrakhan in. The only way that would make sense to you is if you were a multiple or shattered in some way. If you were split psychologically in some way. If the pain was so great that you finally split. Otherwise, you couldn't handle that form of abuse by Rahm Emanuel because that's abuse. That's psychological warfare. Correct? I rest my case. To say, Chick-fil-A is against gay marriage, therefore they hate gays, which is false. But the nation of Islam that wants to kill gays is fine. Chick-fil-A's values are not Chicago's values, but Farrakhan's fine. Uh, okay, I rest my case. There's nothing else I can say. That is multiple personality syndrome, psychosis, and a split. That means the people of Chicago are split, 
are traumatized, are harmed, are psychologically unstable, are unable to digest, to, to, to function unless they remain split. In other words, this is okay over here, that's not okay over there, they're both the same and it's all logical. To have a logical worldview based on those kind of conflicting things would traumatize the individual psychologically. I am not traumatized because I'm seeing it for what it is so I can assimilate. But if I didn't do any thinking about it, if I didn't process what it really means, if I didn't see that Emmanuel is one of the biggest hypocrites that ever walked the earth, and he's a sorry, pathetic individual and not worthy of an office of mayor or respect by people, he needs to go get his, you know, he, he needs to cleanse his soul. You know, I mean, he needs to go away and, you know, work this out because he's purveying pain and suffering on the people of Chicago. Then he wonders, he takes no responsibility for, uh, the murder rate, which is going through the roof, and of course it would, with a guy like that at the helm. But never is it his fault. Never is it the president's fault. Never is it the fault of Congress. Never is it the fault of anyone. So there's no one to blame. So a child growing up and seeing adults behaving that way, what would happen? They would become, yes, you're right, traumatized. Then you can give them Lady Gaga and, 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 and whatever other pop culture things are going on right now, and that will soothe her traumatized state, his traumatized state, the kid's traumatized state, and then they'll assimilate. Which would be into a godless, moralist society that has uh, its own rules, I guess the rule of the jungle. meaning that the kids today will have to become multiple personality syndrome people en masse or they won't be able to cope with the trauma being inflicted upon them by the state, by the secular, godless, uh, antichrist state who has embraced all religions in order to get rid of the one religion. who has embraced every modality of perversion and every modality of, every possibility of uh, physical um, union, except for the one that was designed originally to procreate children. That would be the only one that would be, the state would become prejudiced against. And pretty soon we're going to have um, the human, all the genomes corrupted, including human. And a society of clones would be very much acceptable because then we could program them to do what we want. We being, right? And then, but before we get to that point, and like I say, the end result of all this is to make mankind into, to abrogate the creation of Yahweh, to destroy the Bible, to destroy everything, to use Islam as the hammer to get the new world order in shape, and at that point, to, uh, through transgenics, to become the super race, the, to, to go to the stars, to live indefinitely, to download ourselves into robots, to become, which is really just a ruse, to go from, to destroy the human genome and have the advent and the rise of machines. The machines will then ultimately take over like the James Cameron movie, uh, The uh, Terminator. Basically, that's the goal. I mean, that, that's the only end result that's possible. If you really work it through and, 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 and work through all the movements going on, what all this is about is it leads to the destruction of the human plant and animal genome and the rise of the robot. It's, it, there is no other way to look at it. What other conclusion could one come to in a godless society? The aliens, which a lot of people say are robots, a lot of these little aliens, beings, running around, um, to me, that's just... Uh, the end result of humanity. That that's where that's where the uh, where the whole thing leads. And of course, we've all seen the sci-fi novels. You know, in, in you know 1984, and you know there was the Handmaid's Tale about you know anarchy and you know the breakdown of civilization. And you've seen you know communist Russia, and you've seen. Uh, um, 
Well, you know, talk about cruelty. Stalin uh, cut off the food supply so that people were cannibalizing each other in the streets. So you'd see pictures, as I have, of picketed fences and little sidewalks and things in Russia with bodies just lying in the street next to a parked car and, you know, stuff like that. And, and, and uh, um, yeah, that was created in order for Stalin to get more power. Um, but the idea of using starvation against the people to get... He didn't care how many people he killed. The same group that, that brought you Obama has also considered that once they got their New World Order and their communist regime in, they were going to have to kill the people that couldn't be retrained, and they have actually planned for that. And, and there's a documentary where there was a few people talking about how they were going to bump you know, anyone who wouldn't go along off. Obama comes out of that ilk, out of that, that ethos, out of that mentality. You haven't seen the dark side of him yet because he's all smiles and glad-handing. But that, that cold, psychotic sort of killer thing is in all these people because, again, they abrogated, you, you know, um, they had to go to Satan's side way a long time ago and they had to get rid of their consciences, you know, because they can't do what it's going to take to bring the New World Order in if they have a conscience because they believe that their utopia is just a, uh, a short distance away where they're going to be, you know, in the, in the land of milk and honey that they provided themselves through their own genius, and uh, everyone's going to like it. They're just too stupid to realize that uh, this is what they really want and need. So um, we'll just force it on them, and the ones who can't go along, uh, you know, we'll just uh, deal with them, but they will be excised from society. We only want a society of people who are go on together. I mean, or that's the way the utopia people always think. And then it always winds up in a bloodbath, you know, at some point. And I'm praying that this doesn't happen, but I'm also giving a warning saying, you got about six months to repent. Unless you want to see people cannibalizing each other in the streets, you better make a change. It's, it's out of my hands now. There's nothing I can do, you know? I'm not Superman. I can't have a mega super prayer that's gonna stop all this. People have free will. And if they keep going the way they're going, it's basically the end. The end for them will not be a utopia. The end for them will be a tragedy. A complete and total failure. With human misery amplified to the point where the Living will envy the dead. And it's happened before on this planet. And it will happen again. I thought that America, with the, with the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, the shining city on a hill, as Reagan called it, I thought this was worth fighting for. I, too, got disillusioned with all the architecture in Washington, D.C., and, you know, the, the, the ultimate just a tribute to Satan, basically, and, and just, a, a, you know, um, flaunting it, you know, thinking they're so clever that they've hidden it in plain sight, and they have not with me. It's not hidden in plain sight. It's blatant. But that they would condition people to accept this dichotomy, this split, meaning I love Jesus, but I belong to Satan, you know, kind of like in the same body, you know, that's what they want. And, you know, you know it's, um, you know, for, for the Christian church, which at this point I have to say, I've, the Lord God has written it off. He's written off all those 501c3 churches. Boom, gone. You can be there doing all kinds of good work, but if you're 501c3, it means you've taken an oath to the state. You are illegitimate because you've taken an oath to the state. There's, there's nothing else, no one can, you know, it's sad. You can do all, kind, all the good works you want to do are not going to save you from burning in hell, basically. And it'll be hell on earth, and it's your fault. 
if there was a strong church here in America, there wouldn't be a problem politically. There isn't. I rest my case on just the news. I think it's been too much information. Yep. At the risk of entering into the equation, which I do have no intention of doing, you'll just have to give me a pass on talking about my own life experiences and and um you know, my, my perceptions about what happened and, you know, I understand, I've, I've come to a point of acceptance is my point, where I accept the way the world is. I accept it is what it is. And it was evil back in 1950. Good deed, bad deeds are covered up by good deeds, but bad deeds become a, um, axiomatic necessity in order to bring about wealth, fame, and fortune, etc. I mean, I, I basically accept that. I, I do not accept, um, you know, I'm also here as a living witness to show that a, uh, what can happen. You know, I'm a witness to my own family being destroyed because of their uh, running after the devil for whatever reason. And I've seen it destroy others as well. Many. No man and no woman can make it on their own cognizance. You're going to serve somebody, as Bob Dylan said. It's either going to be the Lord or the devil. It's your choice. But nobody, I'll agree with Barack Obama on this, nobody got there on their own. It's either by the grace of God or by the will of Satan. I mean, you know, one or the other. But it's not, you, if you want to make it in something... You know, like I said with Bill Clinton, you know, he had, the Ku Klux Klan made Senator Byrd a senator, right? He had to join the Ku Klux Klan in order to get elected, according to Clinton. I rest my case. For the Christian, the warning is this. You can't hold on to anything anyway. If you've got things in the world that you do, you can't be too attached. They can't be your number one thing. Your number one thing can't be your career. If you belong to God, he'll just smack it down and make that career fail. It can't be number one. It's like, um, I might have things going, but it's all a sideline. It can't be number and I can't care about it. If I care about it, it's going to be gone. It can't be, you know, it, it, the only way that I can go is to keep my eyes on the Lord and have him as my first priority. You know, and, and, you know, right now it's putting out these podcasts in the hopes that they will help people to also assimilate, to get their minds straight, to get their heads screwed on straight, and to realize that, that their morals and, and mores and uh, Judeo-Christian ethic that, that basically keeps us on the right path, and that throwing that stuff out and um, feeling like you're a cool rebel... Uh, that might be fine for someone about 18, 19, 20 years old, but it's bondage, man. And it's also the death knell of society, meaning it will lead to the abrogation of human rights and ultimately genocide. It doesn't take much for me to see someone like Roseanne Barr, uh, you know, wielding a weapon and shooting people. And I don't, you know, it, it seems to me she's very violent and hostile. I, I, I uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. She's calling out, wishing people get cancer and everything else. And so she's a very violent person. And yet, because she's on the left, they're tolerated. That's all tolerated. But some of the things that she says, and some of the things these people out of Hollywood tweet, it's just downright violent. You know, basically, they're, they're just one step shy of calling for the death of all Christians. I, I, you can see it coming to pass. 
So I would think the Christian brothers and sisters would have a lot in common and would get together and, and praise the Lord, you know? And, and it's, the fact that it's been illegal for people to have Bible studies in their homes, that should tell you something. So people at their, the only possible church in America would have to be an underground church that would, if anyone knew about it, be infiltrated by the other side and busted up. Because the power of prayer is something they can't overcome. They want that stopped. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. I pray that anyone who hears this message can realize the truth in their own lives, that their minds would be healed, Lord, that their soul, the dichotomy, the trauma, the multiple, the whatever, would be healed and they would understand that the world is the cruel mother who wants the double standard to be in, inculcated and, instead of, and, and, and who wants all people to be split so they can handle it. Those of you who are not split, who are traumatized by all this, let that trauma be healed and understand the Lord's got this. The Lord's got this. The Lord's got this. The Lord has this. This is the way it's been from the beginning. People were split from the beginning. People were traumatized and they would go to the other side to heal the trauma and then they become part of the problem, Lord. That these people who will not go to the other side to become part of the problem, that those traumas are healed, that those minds are put back to wholeness, that people understand that double speak is the way of the devil, the double entendre is the way of the devil, the double uh, hypocrisy of uh, uh, rejecting a Christian business but embracing Farrakhan, which would then traumatize people into a kind of an abuse mentality that that would be healed, Lord, because this has been your way. This has been the way that it has happened here from the very beginning of time. There's nothing new under the sun, Lord. Let them know it's the same old, same old, but the hope is in Yahweh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Adonai, the one true source of all life and all creation who will heal all who come to him and who will eventually bring justice and normalcy to the planet Earth in his due time, in the name of Jesus. It's about him, not us. You seek him and your mind will be healed and you'll be made whole. In the name of Jesus, amen. You just got to, you just got to understand you are not to become a split from the trauma of the news and the double speak. You are to understand that double speak is the language of the land, has always been. You are to go beyond that and grow beyond that, to remain intact and to remain whole. How many of you were, had multiplicity and are um, whole? Uh, most, right? Because you go through this healing process of the spirit and the word, and the word makes us whole. And, and as, as the Bible says, you know, the Lord will, 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 will um, anyone who seeks him will not be uh, turned away. He will heal us. He may leave a few thorns in your side, but that's all part of the overall process. There's a thorn in the side of humanity. And, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a karmic debt, if you will. So we're never going to get rid of the affliction of, uh, you know, sickness, old age, you know, death and all these traumas, but you can be intact with your soul and intact with your mind, of sound mind, sound body, and courage, and forgiveness. Now, in my own traumas, and you know, do I have any personal vendetta against, no. I might get frustrated. I think the thing I've had lately is frustration at seeing people running off the cliff and destroying themselves, and that's hard to watch, but in terms of forgiveness, the true forgiveness, it's moot with me because I understand it's been the way in the beginning before I ever even got here. The, the, the Jezebel spirit, which was just the, the same spirit as my own mother, who said Jezebel spirit, what was in her as a microcosm was in the world as a macrocosm. There were no difference between the two. There's nothing peculiar or particular about me other than anything anyone else has gone through. It's the same uh, corruption and if you choose to remain intact or you're just that kind of person then you'll be like a lamb they, they consider you a lamb of the slaughter 
meaning you're a pure heart. You know, you morals and yes is yes, no is no. You know, you're still intact. You haven't split yet. The the uh, the world tries to you know use trauma to do it. I know people have been in the military who were you know all messed up at killing people and seeing people killed and seeing their friends killed and seeing the mayhem and the madness that goes on. But I've seen them healed as well. I've also seen them not healed and not able to cope once they've come back. I've seen both. But it seems the people that are with the Lord, they seem to heal pretty quickly from the trauma of combat. Because combat is just, is even crueler than mommy dearest. I mean, right? It's, it's, you know, they get you, they'll torture you without any remorse whatsoever. You're the enemy. That reminds me, I gotta get that uh, POWMI flag to fly that over my, uh, my RV, along with uh, the American flag, uh, Don't Tread on Me, and POWMIA, that'll, that will uh, uh, keep them at a distance. <laughs> and we do, because we do have people that, and, and you know, I am uh, very supportive of the troops, and I just pray that, you know, again, spiritually, the United States returns to principles. The double speak of Obama and the and the um, Democrat, the secular Democrats and and the secular Republicans that are that are uh, people called rhinos, but they're progressives. You know, they're, they're a sec. They want a secular utopian world order. These people are uh, a real danger because they don't un, they don't realize it now. But what they will rot, what's rot from their um, selfish works would be a failure. For, in other words, would increase human suffering to a level that hasn't been seen for quite a few years. Oh yes, they're doing it all in the name of good intentions. They're doing it all in the name of helping people. But they will, um, just like every other program they do, it will end up doing more harm than good. It will end up harming most everyone, helping no one. For example, the debt crisis we have today doesn't have to be. It, all you have to do is just let the American ingenuity work, get the regulations out. All you have to do is just let them get that jack boot off their necks and let them let them breathe, and uh, they're 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 starved for revenue. Uh, they don't have anything in their coffers. They'd be overflowing. They could do all the programs they want, build all the bridges they want, do whatever they want, have all the, you know, all kinds of benefits. But they won't do it because it's not about prosperity. It's about punishing the enemies that they perceive are their enemies, which are phantoms. The Chick-fil-A is not an enemy of Chicago or an enemy of gay people. But the way the, the way the rhetoric goes, they've just given license to people to vandalize and to harass uh, executives there to uh, uh, try to do harm to the company. And it would be, I probably Eric Holder wouldn't prosecute it. I mean, that's the lawless kind of place we live in. I know I make complete and perfect sense to a lot of people. I know I do. I know I do. You know, because what I'm saying isn't really, you know, of me. It's kind of basically common sense, you know, that, that if, you know, if you reap what we sow, which is, seems to be the rule on planet Earth for everybody, then we better find out, um, and if God is the one that meets out judgment, it is due time, because it's not like a scientific thing where it's you, oh, I did this, so tomorrow I'll reap that. No, it, it could happen 10 years from now, you'll reap for something you did 10 years ago. So if that's the case, then I better find out who's the sheriff in town, and I better find out what the rules are. Hence, in comes the Bible. I mean, at least in the Bush White House, you had Bible study, Right? You know, as, as bizarre as that might seem, there was that effort. And then finally, you know, perhaps, um, you know, Obama believes he's the part of a revolution that in the future there will be no um, conservatives, Republicans, God, people with God and guns and whatnot, that it's all going to become this other kind of place 
and that he's on the right side of history and getting ahead of it and being the leader into it. And they all, the, all the you know, progressives see it that way. And I'm really sorry because they will take humanity to hell if given the chance. Because the first thing that they do to be one of them is to throw out the Bible and to throw out everything it says. Because the Bible, remember, is anti-gay. So to throw out the Bible and uh, go with political correctness. And political correctness leads to um, human misery, genocide, incarceration of all people who are, are not quite right and, you know, are not with us. They have no tolerance for anyone but themselves. None. Zero, zilch, and nada. None. It's, uh, it's quite amazing to me. that I bid you shalom, shalom. I pray that you are well. I pray that you're intact. I want you to get the strength of the Lord. I really do. Yeah, it's a form of religion but denies the spirit. Well, we covered a lot of things. I'll leave you with this. Praise you, the Lord. Praise God. In his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding symbols let everything that hath breath praise the Lord praise you the Lord and that's the final psalm there's 150 psalms and that's number 150 huh looks like all you people with all your le- le- looks like the psalms were the word there was anticipating electronic music and um, you know make it all be a praise to the Lord that's the real that's really my heart is, is music and sound, you know, and, and I realize too that these talks are also a sound. And I realize that, oh gosh, I should have just spent the last hour and a half talking about the trouble we're in in the alternative internet, quasi prophetic, sort of conspiracy laden, whatever this is. Just because it's not 501c3 does not mean it gets a pass. Um, I am constantly, constantly getting things like, you know, um, well, the last thing I saw was a sister sent to me was the guy trying to raise money to make a movie or a TV series off of his fantasy novel or whatever and and, you know that had a Christian you know perspective and the word I got was this God does not need television or movies or um, uh, record contracts to get his word out doesn't need it at all I mean it's use those things you know make your move but when you start saying please sow your seed and send in $300 $300 or $33 or $3,500, whatever it is, send your money so you can be part of history making this movie. This smacks of, of is ugly like the world. This is ugly. It's ugly. And um, it's ugly. If God wanted that to be happening, he would own the studios. I mean, he does. He owns everything. But I mean, you know, it would be, uh, he doesn't need you to be raising money willy-nilly and taking money from people to put, you know, 
Yeah, here's another another word. I, I I'm sorry, I I didn't say all this in the beginning, but you'll notice with me there is no you know, there was there used to be a PayPal thing, you know, a donation for, you know, I'm putting up the website, you and I just was kind of led to to stop all that completely and um get rid of the PayPal account and everything because it it's just it's it's too it has the appearance of, of tawdriness you know and I'm even thinking you know and don't send me anything in the mail either because I I don't want to accept it I, I really um, you know you listen you know uh, you're free to re-record it or these you're free to do whatever you like with the recordings um, if they're a help to you then that's the main point you know it can be financed another way. I have the ability to finance it another way, so it doesn't need, you know, I just found there's so much baggage with that donate button and the and putting an address up there for people to send stuff. I just feel dirty about it, you know? And I repent and I wanna say I'm sorry. I, I could have, I don't know, I left it there and you know, people did donate, you know, I don't know. I don't know, 20 grand a year, 25 grand a year, something, it will cover expenses. It wouldn't cover all the expenses, but it, you know, it was, it was not getting anybody rich, but it was much appreciated at the time. And at the time there were times where we didn't know how we were going to pay our bills. And then, you know, there'd be a, but, but still, you know, it, I never felt okay about it. I know, I don't think Frankie did either, you know. You know, it's something I can't really explain, but I just... Had I been a better person, I would have knocked this stuff off a long time ago. I'm not a very, you know, I'm, I'm weak in a lot of ways, and I'm sorry. I, you know, the button was there. People, you know, at least at the end of the year, I could say to my, uh, the guy doing my taxes, well, I'm not a total loser. Look, I, at least I had some money here, but it's still, you know, it's still a, a form and likeness of the world, isn't it? No, I almost would have rather just um, made a product and sold it, and you know, for the purpose of the of the show, rather than you know. And and anyway, so I I apologize. I realize now it was probably okay then because I hadn't come to this understanding of it. So the Lord allowed it, and then when the Lord kind of, I guess I've just been led to knock it off, and I I don't, and like I say. Um, I wish I had known then what I know now. That it's a real snare and the people that put the, it on and now do I need to do the, the, the ultimate evil of, of telling everyone they should get rid of their donate buttons? No, I don't think so. I just, when I see the button though on someone's page, I feel dirty. I feel ugly. You, you know, it's a visceral feeling that I can't really put into, it makes me feel ugly and dirty about them. You know, like, they're dirty, kind of. And I don't know what that is. Um, and then these guys, but then again, here's the other thing. Say there's no donate button, but buy my book. That makes me feel ugly and dirty, too. So I took the advertising for my books off. They were written 10 years ago. They're, they're irrelevant now. Anyway, they should be out of print. You know, I think that I was really raw back then when I wrote them. I was really on fire at the same time, but really raw. You know, I was really, the message is the same. Repent or you're gonna burn, I mean, the same thing. God's gonna bring his justice, he's gonna flip the tables, he's gonna make it all right. And uh, Glass Backwards was a very perverse tale with lots of profanity and potty mouth stuff in it. And I would sell that along with the other one. I think in a way just to diminish myself as a holy man. I don't want you to see me as a holy man, so I put a potty mouth book out. And that sort of like ruins my reputation. And uh, so that the, the, the official Christianese thing won't accept me. You know? And in a way, maybe there was some wisdom in that. You know, showing that you know, I'm human, I'm a sinner. You know, I um, like things. 
I um, I don't love things. I, I used to love things. But, you know, given the opportunity, I will have nice things. I will do things. I will eat too much, drink too much. Knock it off! See, I'm yelling at my dog. Stop it! Stop jumping on that door! This is awful. Lately, they got this bug that they're going to be, uh, you know, that I've just given them a million chicken strips, and you've had too many, Molly. Stop it. There. You get a little bit of reality of my life. Disobedient dogs. Last few weeks, you couldn't get them to come in from outside. Now they're just in and out and in and out. Well, that's a real problem. But what I should have done, I want to talk about that donate thing because, you know, it's been like an issue since the very beginning. And when PayPal offered, it was like, cool, a donate button. I have a free site here. People can make contributions to paying. And everything that the contributions that were made kind of would cover the, you know, Podbean, Podomatic, all the different things we had going and, you know, the time and the effort. And it was a modest amount that would come in every year. But uh, it was much appreciated. You know, I, I've, but I never, I just want to make an honest confession here. I never really felt good about it. Because it had the same likeness as the church. How was I any different? I mean, it was the same thing. So now, maybe I'm a little better man, uh, even though I'm getting old and forgetting things. And shoot, man, just as I'm starting to get it together, I'm falling apart. But maybe now with a little more wisdom, I mean, I didn't have the benefit of wisdom growing up. I didn't have a father who was a good teacher of me, you know. And I mean, talk about my mother a lot because that was the, like a dominant influence. And um, I never really had a, you know, my father was a very weak man and very... Um, he was a very troubled soul, you know what I mean? And I really felt sorry for, for both of them, for all of them, for all their friends, for everybody that I encountered back then. I'm sorry. But you just can't throw God out and just do your own thing and run with the devil and expect that you're going to get a big high five at the end. Sorry. And you can't punish your kids for not accepting Satan's way. Sorry, that's a blessing to you. That's not a, something you punish. The Lord's going to smack you upside the head you do that. And then and, 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 and all these parents did that with their kids, you know, uh, sending them to mental hospitals if they didn't go with the devil. What the hell is that? For Pete's sake, common sense. If you have a child that's a pure heart that's not going to go with the way of the world, you, that's a blessing unto you. You were given a gift. God Folks, I can't take it anymore. I, this, how can they be so stupid? How? To take a blessing like a pure-hearted one in the family and turn them into the black sheep. How can they do that? Why would they do it? You know, pure heart doesn't mean you're not a sinner. It just means you can't, you, your mind isn't, you're not split. I get you. Say, yes, black is black, white's white. You know what I mean. It doesn't mean you're a better person. You're not going to take drugs. You're not going to get into prostitution. You're not going to... It doesn't mean that you're going to be exempt. In fact, I know a lot of prostitutes, you know, throughout time, of the time I've been on earth, who were... Uh, no, I haven't known them all. I wasn't really that interested in, in prostitutes, but I mean met, you know, known prostitutes. Who were some, a lot of them, multiples and different things and, you know, trouble, but, but many who were like pure hearts, you know, the prostitute with a heart of gold. I think that's a cliche in literature. You know, I've seen that. Doesn't mean you're not going to be like, you're not going to be, a, a, you know, a prostitute or a drug addict or a criminal even, even a criminal. Yeah, it, does, it just means that, that it's not split. I, you know, it's hard to explain what I mean actually right now. But I'm hoping that you already know and so I don't need to go any further with that. Anyway... Well, had those people had decent parenting, now maybe they wouldn't have gone that way.
Many became homeless because they were pure hearts and they couldn't get in the swing of things, you know. They couldn't do the razzle-dazzle because they couldn't get their minds split into yes is no and no is yes and this is up is down and backwards and forwards and Alice in Wonderland and that whole thing. They couldn't grok that, so they wound up on the streets. Not everyone can grok. Anyway, the bottom line is, if the Lord sends you a pure-hearted one, you know, and you're not pure-hearted, the thing you don't want to do is then put your, try to put your thing on them because you're never going to be successful because they weren't born that way. They're not like you. And they can't be like you through force. You know, um, the, the whole need to have, every, have nothing special and have everyone be everything is, um, you know, that, that punishing um, conformity uh, scourge of stupidity ruins our society. Yes, a pure-hearted one in, a, in a, a normal world, that person should go into the priesthood. That's correct. It's a blessing to the family. What the hell? I, I don't get it. Why would you kill those and then destroy yourselves and now you have nothing to show because your family's been decimated and doesn't exist anymore? Why would you commit suicide by taking a gift of God and destroying it and meaning, you know, cutting your own throat in the process? Why? And folks, I've seen this. I have seen this over and over and over again. You check on that family 10 years later, decimated. There are consequences to the way you treat your children. Not all your children are going to be the same as every other sibling. Some are going to be like made for the world, some will be made for the Lord. But if you want everyone to be made for the world and so you punish the ones made for the Lord, hell fire is going to rain down on you like I said to, to my own mother. You're going to burn. There's consequences to abusing children because they won't be like you. Oh God, I'm living in a world of absolute retardation. I'm living in a world where nobody can understand common sense and that you're punished even for, for, for being um, intact. I, of all people, should be completely unintact, but I, let me be a miracle of you know, having been through, you know, something that um, usually renders people you know, people can cope, maybe, but they're not intact. They're, they're, they're split in a million ways, and yet the world accepts them, and they see them as a, you know, be, you know, they're insane, but the world doesn't see it that way because they're able to cope. And, of course, when I say sane, what I mean is whole, intact spiritually, you know, mentally, you know, logic, wisdom, all those things come to bear on someone who is intact. I know a lot of people my age who are complete and total wrecks. They have no wisdom, no discernment. You know, they're becoming, as they go into their old age, and I'm going into old age, so they're becoming more and more infantile and regressing into childhood and impetuousness and impulsivity rather than wisdom. When I say impetuousness and impulsivity, I mean no ability, you know, knee-jerk reactions to things, no ability to think a thing through, no patience to wait on um, any, let alone wait on the Lord, but wait on anything. They want everything now, yesterday, everything's an emergency, everything they don't get their way, it's all horrible and, you know, it's just a terrible way to live to, by your own wits. And it retards wisdom. Wisdom comes from though, to those who seek the Lord and his wisdom and his mystery and, be, and, and witness to his greatness and power and authority 
and, and witness to his reality. And then I see wisdom comes to those, like the wisdom of Solomon comes to those. Most of the book of Proverbs is common sense. It's what used to be called common sense. The book of Ecclesiastes, one of the, the wise manuals for old age, everything is vanity. So seek that which is not vanity, God, and the rest is just small stuff. You know, like the book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, it's, and in the end, it's all small stuff. That's right. In the end, all of our little puny little lives are just small stuff. The main thing that counts is the Lord God creator and his morals and ethics and ways and wisdom as it applies to governments and individuals and kingdoms upon the earth to be applied so that society can be a harmonious, you know, that yes is yes and no is no. A handshake is a good contract. People feel guilt when they, when they lie and cheat, you know, they repent. It should not be a place where injustice thrives, where lying helps you succeed. I mean, it's terrible for the president, and any president, all of them, if they have done it, to lie to the people thinking it's for the greater good. It just teaches, because children know when, when Obama's lying, but they accept it and they do likewise, then they lie. Because, you know, he's a, a big example. And the example he's setting is that lying uh, works. Lying brings progress. So now these kids who look up to the president, now they lie and feel that it's justified. Or like any kind of sports figure or, 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 or rock stars, they see these, you know, rock goddesses, the, and I use Lady Gaga as a cliche to mean all of them, and the, the, there's a whole new batch coming up now, shoving her out. Madonna's now getting booed and laughed at. But, uh, you know, the spell is gone, right? The, the sheen is off of her, and now they see her for what she is, and they, they, don't, they want their money back. But it's not off the young ones, and they see these role models coming up and want to be just like them, hedonistic, selfish, spoiled, demanding, impetuous, impulsive. Uh, you know, they, they see a, even a Lindsay Lohan. They think, yeah, cool. Drugs, irresponsibility, being in court all the time, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, do what you like, do what thou wilt. Do what thou wilt leads completely and totally to a, a train wreck of a life. Because it's not about you, I mean, for the one thing. So your pleasure, even your denial of pleasure or acceptance of pleasure or whatever, it's, it's irrelevant compared to the big picture of things going on. And people, the way they are um, so demanding of each other, they want it, they want it now. They jump in the sack for, for no other reason than to not get busted for being a prude. Oh my gosh. It's embarrassing. Let alone the people joining the satanic orgy, the magic show in order to get goodies. These people are the biggest idiots on planet Earth uh, and, and are the most unwise um, and irresponsible because they learn that they really don't have to earn anything. They can just get it by doing bad things to other people or by abrogating morals that they're supposed to have and praying to strange gods to get their goodies and favors and even fill the coffers in their churches by getting together and doing their rituals. I just... And then if you don't join them, you're blocking the, the, the benefits. So let's kill you. Uh, okay. Oh my God. Well, what that is, um, is witchcraft. And it's run by the Jezebel spirit and by the women of the church run those, um, you know, use the men feeling they have a little trick they can do to get stuff. And they, and they, they do this. And the church, it becomes the milieu for that kind of activity 
Then they go out like they've never done anything wrong and they act all squeaky clean. And they get down on people who are uh, pure hearts who don't see it that way. And um, they, they make their lives a, a living hell. I, well, then, then, then my, my prophecy to you, which will come due, is that your life will now become a living hell. And then all those stupid things you do uh, and silly things you do won't bring blessing to anyone but a curse. A curse of destruction of your families, of your hopes and dreams, of your finances, of everything that you hold dear will be ripped from your hand now because you won't, in the name of Jesus, you're doing black magic. And no, don't tell me it's, okay, so it's not, uh, it's, it is what it is. You know, most satanic rituals are just based on, um, you know, doing the wrong thing, doing something God hates among people that know God on purpose to get stuff, whether it's doing harm to a person sexual perversion, whatever. It can take on any form. And there, there are people that are caught up in it and are doing it all the time, making a brother trip and fall and then taking that, that blessing that comes from, you know, a true brother, I mean, a true Christian, making a pure heart stumble and fall, leading a lamb to the slaughter, gives a big pop. So creating human misery makes, and, and look at them in Congress, Congress is a satanic ritual. They're making people miserable and they're boosting their own power as a result. That's, that's what it is. It's a seesaw. Right? When they go down, you go up. When they, when they go up, you go down. So therefore, we've got to make sure they're going down all the time so I can keep going up. So I gotta stay on it and get you know, Satan's police force out there to watch out for anyone not following the rules. And then we can all rise together. One big connection. One big utopia. Well, the only problem with that is that God didn't make everyone as a collective to do collective rituals to bring about uh, great personal results and bank accounts in people's lives. That is an abomination unto God and will be completely, not just cut off, but destroyed. And anyone who is there, uh, if they, if, and if they're saying that they are a believer in Jesus while that's going on, they're twice dead and they're going to burn. And you better just get away from them so you're not counted with the plagues to be visited upon these people because their day will come. Period. And there is no other way to look at it and there is no other reality to it. There's nothing else, it's just common sense. Don't do abominations to God on the one hand in secret and then openly proclaim the gospel on the other hand to recruit people. Stop that or you're going to burn. No, I know, no. And let me make a further prediction. Folks, they won't listen to me and they're not going to stop that. Let it be a witness, Your Honor, that it was uttered here so when it happens, there was a witness. Thank you. Next, please. Next case. <laughs> I hope I have the nerve to put this up. Uh, and with that, I bid you shalom. I'll see you later.